Okay. This morning I'm sitting here doing the tape lines for my wife's LS. And I figured I would share a little story with y'all this morning. Um, years ago, I went on a work trip to Taiwan. And I went to Kaohsiung, Taiwan, which is the second largest city. Uh, Taipei is the capital city. But we landed in Kaohsiung and I can't remember how many people live in Kaohsiung. I can look it up later. Um, but me and another guy go on a work trip. We land in Kaohsiung, you know, try to sleep off the jet lag. They take us to the factory and basically we start work. Well, we get there and of course, you know, as life would have it, you have to go to the bathroom. Well, that was my first experience with an Asian toilet. Okay, if you don't know, an Asian toilet is just a trough cut in the floor. There is nothing actually to sit on. So the trough cut in the floor, you actually just hover over it like this and bounce. Now the trick is you have your pants down and you're trying to hover and you're trying not to get it on your shoes. So all that's going on. Well, the other neat feature is there's also no dividers to the stalls. There is just 20 troughs cut into the floor, all side by side, and it's open, one giant bathroom but there's a little bucket beside each trough. And I go in to do my business and I notice the little bucket. So I look over in it and it's a bucket for the paper when you're done. Their plumbing system can't handle flushing toilet paper. Their plumbing system isn't that good. So, you're supposed to throw your paper, when you're done with it, in the bucket. Now, fast forward a couple days, and we're sitting at breakfast, and I have now figured out why everyone is eating giant hunks of cheese. I couldn't figure out for the life of me why at breakfast everyone was just sitting around gnawing on giant hunks of cheese. And I'm not talking about the little cubes. You know, when you get the pepperoni, you get the crackers and the little cheese and the pepperoni, the little cubes. No, this was real giant hunks of cheese. So I finally figured out why everyone was eating the cheese. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's to stop you up for everything you're eating. No, no. It's just to slow it down enough to bring it to a level that's humane. Okay? So if it would, would stop you up, that would have been great. But no, I don't think that's humanly possible. Um, so I'm sitting at breakfast, eating my cheese. And then I decide, you know, when we get to the plant, I'm gonna, I'm, go, I'm gonna hold it. I'm not going back to the trough room. I decide that, nope. I can make it. I can make it till we get back to the hotel because the hotels have what's called a Western toilet, which was we're all used to. So I'm doing my best, not thinking about it 
not gonna go. Well, in Kaohsiung, it was maybe felt like 135 degrees, but I'm sure it wasn't. Um, there was enough heat that when I walked out of the hotel in the morning, I would be in a clean clothes, just showered, stepped out of our air-conditioned air hotel. And when I would raise my hand outside to hail a taxi cab, sweat would run down my arm after just stepping out of the hotel. That's how hot and humid it was in Kaohsiung. So, I'm doing my part, I'm working in the factory, and it gets the heat of the day. And the heat of the day, I couldn't hold it anymore. I was sweating profusely. Everything I had eaten has decided that it needs to come out. Um, so of course, I go back to the trough room. As I go in the trough room, nobody else is in there. It's a good thing. Remember, 20 empty troughs. I'm there doing my thing, trying not to fall down. And in comes some little Taiwanese guy. Now, mind you, where we're at, they don't see white people. It's not like we're at the Hard Rock Cafe. You know, tourists aren't there. Everyone you see is intrigued to see a white guy. So, I'm sitting in trough number 20. Guess where Mr. Little Taiwanese Man comes? Little Mr. Taiwanese comes over and sits in spot number 19. Right beside me. So, I'm there doing my thing, trying to concentrate, trying not to fall, trying not to get any in my shoes, and just basically trying to get done, get out of there. Little guy comes down, sits beside me, looks over at me, you know, drops trowel, sits down beside me, looks, goes, and the best at that moment, all I could muster was, yeah, buddy, whatever. So I finish. Going back out to the plant. And as on my way out the door, I see a guy coming in with a really big bucket. And I'm like, huh, that must be the janitor. Well, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. He's going to have to empty all these papers. So something possessed me to just stand outside. And he comes back out and he has his giant bucket full from all the little buckets. Yes, you guessed it. He's, he's riding around with a bucket full of. So he walks over to his little three wheel bicycle it's got a basket on the back. And he dumps it right in the back of his buggy. So he's got his little three-wheel bicycle. Many, many job sites got the three-wheel bicycles. I'm sure a lot of people have seen them. He puts that right in the back. So it's literally right behind him. And he rides off into the sunset. It was a, I can still remember it vividly to this day. He rides off into the sunset 
with that bucket on the back of his little bicycle, on the back of his little three-wheel bicycle. And at that moment, I decided I had learned a valuable, very, very valuable life lesson. No matter what job I was doing, my job doesn't suck as bad as that guy's. It doesn't matter what's going on. I may have had a bad day at work, but I did not have as crappy a day as that guy was having every day. So it's been, it's probably been 25 years since I saw that little guy. And chances are, He's still riding that bicycle today. He's still there emptying cans. So yes, your job may suck, but I guarantee you that his job is worse. So that's the story for today. Remember, it could suck. Doesn't suck as riding around with a bicycle full of crap behind you. Have a good day. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for today.